All right, well, let's take a look at the performance without ray tracing enabled before we take a look at what happens when we turn the ray tracing on. In that very initial scene, we actually saw a little bit of a CPU limit by the uh, AMD card, although the NVIDIA card didn't seem to be reaching the frame rate necessary to hit that CPU limit. My CPU, by the way, is an R9 5950X, and we're using 3600 CL16 timing RAM here. By the way, I feel like I notice a slight color grading difference between the two GPUs here. And I captured the footage on each GPU's built-in hardware encoder through their own software. I didn't notice any real difference to the look of the game when I was actually uh, watching it on my screen. So I think this is an encoding difference rather than a, uh, an actual difference in, you know, AMD produces different colors than NVIDIA kind of situation. <laughs> I think it's just the recording. Now, um, we do see AMD getting a good performance lead here. So this looks like a uh, rather well optimized for AMD title, especially seeing that at 4K, oftentimes the NVIDIA cards have the lead. Um, I am using smart access memory enabled, if you were wondering. But what happens when we kick on some ray tracing, which I'm about to do? So with ray tracing enabled, notice this is running at the native resolution. I'm not using DLSS. This is still native 4K. I'm also not using FSR. But we are seeing pretty decent performance from AMD, but we'll see in certain scenes where I think there's more of the sun shadows happening. Um, AMD certainly does go from having that commanding lead without ray tracing to having a definite loss, although it's not a staggeringly terrible loss here with the RT sun shadows enabled. Now that's the key here, is that um, the first ray tracing setting I'm enabling here is just the RT sun shadows. I've not yet enabled the reflections, which are much heavier. And it seems like what we see here is what I see in a lot of ray tracing implementations, which is that some of the lighter implementations, uh, like shadows, for example, or sun shadows, Oftentimes, AMD doesn't do too poorly. It's ob obviously uh, losing more performance than NVIDIA does, uh, but it does seem like a, sa a setting that you could enable. Obviously, we could have used some FSR here uh, to try to claw back a little bit of performance, especially in this last scene of the benchmark here. We can see the frame rates uh, and even the 3080 dipping below 60 FPS at times. But on uh, what if we turn on the reflections? So here we're looking at without FSR and without DLSS, the performance with the RT reflections just set to low. And we can see that both GPUs take an incredibly hard performance hit here, um, even with the setting at low, and I am leaving on the RT sun shadows as well. Uh, to the point where I don't think using either of them at the native 4K resolution makes sense here. So we'll definitely take another look at this, but I wanted to get this as a baseline performance, and I left on the RTX 3080 without ray tracing um, on the left-hand side so we can get a visual comparison of what the game looks like with ray tracing on versus ray tracing off. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm not blown away by the ray tracing effects in this game. And that honestly, that tends to be my opinion of ray tracing in a lot of games. And um, I think if you want to see a, a better job showing off the differences, uh, you could take a look at Digital Foundry's video on this game. They did a good job of highlighting all the differences between the various ray tracing settings. But to me, the goal of this is more of a performance benchmark, and I'm not looking to highlight what ray tracing does. I'm looking to show it off in actual gameplay or in a moving benchmark here, rather than try to cherry pick examples where it looks impressive. So obviously we needed to either use DLSS or FSR or both, so that's what we've done. Now notice that I've set them both to their quality setting, which means that FSR 1.0, if you're on a native 4K screen here, I can absolutely tell that there is some upscaling happening. This is not even the... Um, the ultra quality setting for AMD here. Now, YouTube compression is going to be diminishing some of uh, the loss of detail that you see here, um, 
or actually increasing it on both images is what YouTube compression would really be doing here. But uh, if you're not on a 4K screen <laughs> or YouTube is destroying it, I can tell you that you can definitely tell there's an increased sharpness on the left-hand side here with DLSS quality looking, um, definitely producing a better image than FSR 1.0 at quality. Although at 4K, uh, if you're on a smaller 4K screen, I think this, this would still be kind of usable. We can still see here dipping into the 30 FPS range. I think my conclusion here is I really wouldn't go any lower than FSR quality with 1.0 and the frame rates still weren't getting somewhere I'd like them to be. Even the RTX 3080 with DLSS quality and the reflections at low was struggling a bit here at 4K, which is why we're gonna take a look at this. So on the 3080, we could tell there was a bit more headroom here. So this is all RTX 3080s across the screen and we're looking at on the far left hand side, what if we kept the reflections at low but increased the DLSS more aggressively to the balance setting to get a higher frame rate? Alternatively, what if we went all the way down to the performance DLSS mode and then tried out either reflections at medium or at high? This is also giving you a chance to look at the difference between the low, medium, and high reflections, although with a difference in the DLSS quality for low, um, as I uh, explained. Now, again, when you're not going out of your way to look for it, there's really not a huge visual difference. And then even in Digital Foundry's video, where they dive, dive a lot further into this, the medium reflections look very similar to the uh, high reflections, but have obviously, as we can see here, better performance. Now, I don't like using DLSS performance even at 4K, and balanced is kind of hit or miss for me. Balanced is at least usable. I can see uh, a lot more aliasing around the edges of object in, objects in motion. So personally, I would not use these performance modes. I can see a loss of stability in the uh, window here, for example. It's kind of shimmery, even on the balanced setting. All right, so what about 1440p? I know a lot more people are actually gaming at 1440p. By the way, we can see a CPU limit here in this initial window scene. Um, so if you do look at the GPU usage, we can sometimes see it dropping below 100%, and that's because we're hitting a bit of a CPU limit. By the way, using ray tracing does increase the CPU load. So while that scene can be CPU limited even without ray tracing, it's even further CPU limited. And again, I have a quite a high-end CPU here uh, to be running into that kind of a limit. But anyway, once again, we're seeing here with the just the sun shadows on, both GPUs are performing pretty well here at 1440p. And we do see that uh, Nvidia definitely has the performance lead, but it's not a staggering lead for that GPU. Although once again, remember that without ray tracing on, the AMD card actually has a very significant performance advantage. So the AMD card is certainly losing a much higher percentage. And we can see here where I think there's more sunlight coming in casting sun shadows that the, uh, you know, the, the performance drops even further for the AMD GPU. Uh, maybe one of the bench other benchmarks built in here could have been better for uh, showcasing sun shadows. This, this does seem to have a lot of interior scenes, but I did make sure that I had at least some sunlight coming in. All right, but what if we try out some FSR uh, 1.0 to get in some reflections at low on the right-hand side? And on the left-hand side, please notice that the NVIDIA GPU is running at native 1440p. I noticed that um, I could keep reflections at low with the sun shadows on the NVIDIA GPU uh, and get good enough frame rates that I did not feel the need to use DLSS. You certainly could to boost the frame rate further. Again, on the right-hand side, the AMD GPU is relying on FSR 1.0 at the ultra quality setting, which at 1440p looks reasonable, although personally, I would prefer the sharpness of the native image and would probably just choose not to use the RT reflections here. Um, if you're on maybe a smaller screen, so it's maybe less apparent to you that you've lost a little bit of detail, or you know some people are just less picky than I am about the loss of fine details and maybe you just don't notice it to your eye, um, it is producing a frame rate here that's at least usable, although we can see as we get into the heavier scene here towards the end of the benchmark, 
we're certainly not staying above 60 FPS. It does dip into the 40s here. Even the NVIDIA GPU wasn't staying above 60 the whole time, although again, that was doing it at the native resolution rather than using any upscaling. But what about the upscaling? Because I know some of you guys were like, that's not fair. You weren't letting the NVIDIA GPU use its upscaling, DLSS. Okay, that's what we're looking at here, relax. <laughs> um, so here we're looking at um, the reflections at medium and the reflections at high using DLSS quality. So we can see that if the NVIDIA GPU is willing to use DLSS at 1440p, which does look very close to the native image, we are able to get playable frame rates here at both medium and high reflections. Although I think we'll see here as we get into the more difficult ray tracing scenes, I think using the reflections at high, we will see some dips below 60 FPS. Whereas keeping the reflections at medium, you retain most of the visual quality, uh, but do maintain significantly higher frame rates through certain portions of this benchmark. So with that in mind here, I think um, the medium settings are the way to go if you're going to be using DLSS. So I actually think that the left hand side here would probably be my recommended 1440p ray tracing settings uh, for this game on the RTX 3080 because it does keep us above that 60 FPS mark and we can see here that the reflections on high were usable. But let's take a look at 1080p. So at 1080p I don't want to use upscaling. I don't want to <laughs> Uh, to use uh, FSR or DLSS. Neither one looks very good at 1080p, although DLSS does have the advantage compared to FSR 1.0 for sure. Now we can see here that with the sun shadows enabled but no reflections, that both GPUs are doing extremely well. Although um, I did see a quick frame time spike there on the AMD card. I don't know if that's just a minor run to run variance here because overall it seems to be maintaining a high frame rate. Again, it's just the sun shadows. So in scenes where more sunlight comes in, the AMD card does seem to take a little bit more of a hit. And once again, I, um, a different benchmark runner, a different level might have more sunlight and hit performance a bit worse, but the performance is so good here, I wouldn't expect it to require um, DLSS or FSR here. Now, some of you guys are like, who would use these cards at 1080p? Well, I think a lot of people build their PC for high refresh rate eSports, so 240 hertz, 360 hertz monitor. There's even a 500 hertz 1080p monitor coming out. <laughs> and those people might buy a high-end GPU um, and then still play single player games along with their uh, more esports related titles, so I don't think this is unrealistic to look at at 1080p. Now, what if we want to turn on the reflections? Well, once again, I didn't want to use FSR or DLSS, so what I did instead was I changed what kind of reflections the GPU could handle to try to optimize it here a little bit. So please notice that the NVIDIA GPU on the left here is using the reflections at medium whereas the AMD GPU is using the reflections at the low setting and is still dipping a little bit below 60 FPS at times like we can see here, although it would be playable. Personally though, the fact that you could be playing this at an incredibly high frame rate without the ray traced reflections makes me question how worthwhile it is to use it, <laughs> uh, especially on the AMD side here. Uh, on the NVIDIA side, um, I mean, you could do the reflections back down to low to gain back some performance. But still, uh, getting towards some of my final thoughts here, like, I'm really waiting for the next gen of GPUs before I, I'm really personally thinking ray tracing is that big of a deal since we take this massive performance hit on both of the GPUs, even NVIDIA, um, and really I don't find the visual difference to be mind-blowing.